I, I just will start by, by showing here one, one thing that has to do with uh, why are we discussing this issue, knowledge and power, um, today. And um, I just uh, uh, would say that uh, it's because we are in, in the middle of a, a deep transformation, a, a deep crisis, we, we can, a set of crises. Uh, we can we can mention that as the way you wish because we all feel the same. We feel a, a certain sense of uneasiness. And um, um, I should say that uh, this this uneasiness uh, in in life and in knowledge um, uh, matters shows two things. It shows a great degree of uncertainty. That is not new. All epochs, in all times, we have had uncertainty. Uncertainty is with us. Uncertainty has to do with uh, the arrow bars, in fact. Some people claim that uh, the information is in the, the arrow bar. And uncertainty is, in fact, uh, related to our ignorance. We don't, cannot know everything. So uncertainty exists and will exist forever because we'll never be able to know everything. So uncertainty is with us, it has been with us all the time. So why is your crisis a bit different from the different crises that we have witnessed in history? Not all of them, of course, but some of them, most of them. It's because we are living in times of complexity. And uh, complexity is a different word from uncertainty. Uh, complexity has to do with the rest of the world. That is to say, we cannot forget the rest of the world in our analysis. Uh, this is uh, not new. There were other periods in history where, where complexity arose, but some other periods were not complex to this extent, where we had very good theories which explained everything. Um, but complexity is different. It means that everything is connected. I would say that complexity means very simply, very simply, uh, complexity is the impossibility of separating things, right? The system cannot be separated from its context, right? If it is separated from its context, it loses meaning. A living being, a being, cannot be separated from the environment. How can we study life by killing the animal or the plant? Of course, they are no longer living. So we are just corpses. So to study living beings, we have to study the whole living being and its environment. And also uh, the object from the measuring instrument. So in fact, what complexity means is that we cannot separate, end separation. And this for uh, some centuries is rather new and it makes us uh, an easy, a sense of uneasiness. The impossibility of separation means that everything is connected. Uh, in social sciences, we, we, we produce, translate this by saying that uh, everything is interdependent. And if everything is interdependent, we really cannot forget the rest. We cannot forget the rest of the world. Now, why I'm saying this, it's because when we, we see the, 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 how structures of knowledge have evolved, I mean, for um, you know, five or six centuries, we see that since um, the end of Renaissance, since the invention of linear perspective, that we have developed a culture of separating, separation. Well, the first, the first separation, of course, mm -hmm. is the separation between subject and object. Right? Uh, we took the subject out of the description, and by that we, 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 we we uh, intended to, to, to be objective. And then, uh, later on, we proceeded by, uh, in, in the 16th century, in the time of Reformation, by separating ethics from politics. Right? We separated that. I mean, the great work of Machiavelli, it's just one, one of his uh, uh, very important uh, uh, features. And the other separation was, in fact, due to the use of a machine, the camera obscura, by the artists. Again, there was no science, no modern science at the time, which was a separation of light from vision. 
Until that time, light as a physical phenomenon didn't exist. Vision, light was vision, and it was inseparable. We saw, so light was something that we, with which we saw. But by using this camera kind of obscure and being able to, to trace the things very nicely, we understood for the first time that light was a physical phenomenon. And in fact, that maybe its velocity could, could not be, or could be finite. It was the first time. Then, later on, uh, we became further separations. The public sphere was separated from the private sphere. And then, a very important one on the 17th century, theology was separated from philosophy. Philosophy, in fact, separated from theology. Space was separated from time, and matter from the mind. So, the, the world was really coming into uh, very separable uh, categories of mind. And then, in the Enlightenment, in the 18th century, state and church became separated, and science finally, Modern science separated from philosophy. Science was until then something like natural philosophy. And so science became separated clearly from philosophy. Then in the 19th century, in the Industrial Revolution, uh, economy separated from society. It was no longer uh, uh, a mechanism of society. Economy was, was uh, something from, from itself. And in fact, in terms of the economic terms, the ownership of things became separated from the production of them. And then we went on. Uh, home was separated from work. That gave rise to the notion of employment. Right? People didn't work at their homes as before. Definitely most of the population. And science became separated from tech that is to say, techno science was born, the science that uh, that brings technology about. Okay, so uh, we see that um, uh, this culture of separation, uh, um, which in fact brings a, a society that works into a mechanism that we call capitalism, uh, this, uh, this mechanism of separation, in fact, is at a halt at the moment. Why? Because we saw, we see that the complexity is creeping in, is pervading <coughs> our, our way of thinking, and that, that gives rise to a, a big epistemological crisis. Because if complexity is in, uh, we cannot separate no longer things, and all this structure begins to, to crumble. Zero minutes, okay. No, no, that's right. Um, I saw, I just comment, uh, if, if I may, on just the things, I, 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 will, I will finish uh, with, with my PowerPoint. Uh, this, this question that Harvey and, and, and Moni just said it's so beautiful, um, reason and emotion all the time. Well, there's in fact no opposition between uh, rational and irrational. Uh, reason from emotion, there's no separation. There is a continuum. And philosophers uh, know uh, that, um, that uh, reason arose from passion. Uh, Pascal said, la raison n'est the, the passion. So reason comes up, springs up from emotions. There are some philosophers even who say that reason is encapsulated emotion. So it's emotions with rules, very strict rules. That is reason. Well, maybe we agree, we don't agree, but <laughs> doesn't matter. But so what I mean to say is that it's a continuum. So we need both because we are whole. We think and we think and we cannot discard either reason or the emotional process, but I, we have had rules. And society, and we have seen that all this, all this thing, as Momir said, for instance, uh, without modern science, there was no progress. Right? It is there. Right? It is simple. So modern science is there. So how could we have the notion of progress without this, this notion? So my second comment is about truth. Uh, and about truth, I just uh, would like to recall the beautiful sentence of André Gide, which is a, a, a thinker and a writer, a French writer, and he said um, uh, the wonderful, uh, wonderful sentence. He said, uh, "Get close to those who seek, who search truth. Get close to those who search truth, and get away from those who have found it." Thank you.